Good morning. Can we greet our streaming family in Jesus' name? Put your hands together. Good morning and welcome. Oh, I hope you're here to be blessed today. I have got an encouraging word. We're in our series called A Macedonian Moment, and we're talking about Macedonian clashes, part four. Whenever God moves, there is a clash of kingdoms. And today we're going to follow up on our notes where we started last week, and we're going to be talking about a Paphos clash. I want to read our text from Acts chapter 13, verse 6. It says, They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching of the Lord. Well, may God bless the reading of his encouraging word. <laughs> We've been talking about clashes, and beloved, we are living in a time where we're standing on the brink of the greatest outpouring of God in human history. But it's going to involve a set of clashes that are remarkable. And today, I, I want to talk about eight milestones at Paphos. Do you know there are times in life where everything you've been prepared for begins to happen, and firsts begin to happen? Can you still believe for a milestone in your life? Blessings that have never happened before. Well, we're going to meet the Apostle Paul. He's going to be called Paul the first time at this particular city. But we're going to be looking at milestones accomplished in the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul and Barnabas have been anointed by the Holy Spirit, and they've been sent out, and they've come to the Isle of Cyprus. And they've gone to the western side, and they come to a city called Paphos. And you say, well, what is Paphos? Paphos was the governmental city where Sergius Paulus, the proconsul, was presiding over the Isle of Cyprus. And I want you to notice that Barnabas and Saul are the ministry team. Barnabas is a godly man. Barnabas was the first man to see Paul and to support him and to believe in him. Yet there's going to be a monumental transformation in Paul's life. His name is going to be changed in one day. Oh, what a difference a day makes. We are standing on the brink of seeing God bring milestones to pass. And I want you to just take a look at some things that happened at Paphos. As soon as Barnabas and Saul arrive at this city, we see Saul's name completely changed to Paul. You know, he's been called Saul 20 times throughout the narrative in the book of Acts. But in the city of Paphos, in one day, monumental milestones are going to come to pass. We know him as Saul of Tarsus, and that's the only name we know him by. But all of a sudden, supernaturally in this city, his name is going to move from Saul to Paul. And beloved, God loves to change names. I think we're on the brink of having some name changes. Did you know in Genesis 17, Abram and Sarai, they were barren. They could not have a child. And so God changed the names of Abram and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah. And by the changing of their name, they were able to conceive Isaac and run into the greatest milestone fruitfulness in their lives. And did you know that God changed the name of Jacob Jacob meant heel catcher, conniver, deceiver, and he changed his name to Israel, which meant a prince who has power with God. 
And even in the New Testament, he found Simon. And the word Simon means reed, one blown in the wind. But he said, Simon, I'm going to change your name from the reed who blows in the wind to Cephas, to the rock. Your name shall be Peter. God transforms and changes our names. And we're living in a season where the Lord is going to change names. And I just want to pray right now. Father, we thank you for the name-changing power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you right now, Lord, that you are going to transform Abrams and Sarahs who have been barren into Abrahams and Sarahs, the prince that has the princess that has power with God. Lord, you're going to transform reeds into rocks. And we give you praise right now, Father, that you are going to change names even today. The first milestone in Paphos was Saul became Paul. And the second milestone that we see is this was Paul's first encounter with an influential Roman leader. At Paphos, there is a Roman leader named Sergius Paulus. Now, back in Acts 9.15, it was prophesied that Paul would stand before kings and great men, people of great influence in his culture. And this is the first milestone of Paul having an influence over a major Roman leader. And Sergius Paulus is the first one. This man was a senator. He was under the emperorship of Claudius. He was extremely influential. And he was in this outpost of Roman power. But there was a man named Elymas. And Elymas was a magician. He was called Amagus. And he was influencing Sergius Paulus. He was called a wise man, yet he was not a wise man. He was a man of demonic proportions. And he was influencing Sergius Paulus. And Sergius Paulus heard of Paul and Barnabas, and he said, Come and give me the gospel. Come and tell me the truth. But Elymas, his name was also Bar-Jesus, was deceiving Sergius Paulus. And he was using every influence of the demonic in order to cause him not to hear the truth. And we're going to see the first apostolic miracle in Paul's entire ministry is going to be released in the city of Paphos. And so there are milestones in Paul's life. Barnabas and Paul come into the city of Paphos in one ministry relationship. Barnabas is the superior. Paul, Saul is the inferior. He's been called a teacher. He's been called a prophet. But in this one day at Paphos, Paul is going to move from teacher and prophet to the Apostle Paul, changes, milestones. And we are in a position of milestones. I want to pray right now, Father God, we pray right now that milestones would begin to fall upon your people. Firsts that your people have never known and have never experienced. God, open our hearts to be in a position of receiving blessings, the presence of your Holy Spirit in a new way, new firsts that we could never imagine in our own strength. Praise your name, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. The next milestone, the first miracle in Paul's ministry. He had been preaching, he had been teaching, he had been faithful. But there was an apostolic sign and wonder that happened for the first time. Elymas, this false teacher, is bringing mixture, and he is bringing deception. And yet the Scripture says the Holy Spirit filled Paul, and he was able to strike this demonic man with darkness and blindness. And did you know when you read the text here, it's not too politically correct. He calls him a son of the devil. He says, you are filled with all unrighteousness. And all of a sudden, a darkness falls upon Elymas, and he has been perverting the straight way of the Lord, and now darkness comes upon him, and he has to seek to be led by the hand, 
And so he's limping and he's blind. And all of a sudden, Sergius Paulus sees this clash of power. And he believes the word of the Lord. This is the first amazing Roman to be saved in the history of the book of Acts. Oh, beloved. Paul had never seen power before like this. And the power you're about to see, you've never seen before. He's about to bring power through your life. And notice Elymas was influencing Sergius Paulus. But God removed Elymas so that he could not deceptively control this powerful man of influence. And the Lord is about ready to remove demonic power that has been influencing people of great influence. Beloved, I just have to pray right now. I'm sorry. Father, we thank you. Lord, I feel your presence, and I ask that your presence would fall upon your people. I ask for a new anointing, never before felt or seen, to rest upon this congregation, Lord. I pray for your daughters, O oh God. Give them milestones in their lives. Give them new firsts. Visit their relational lives, God. Visit their financial lives, Lord. We pray right now that you would break every demonic foothold off of your present, your precious daughters, Lord God. That you would come and you remove every subversive influence from your sons. Every divisive power would be lifted. That your comfort, God, like a cloud would come and rest upon your people. Break every yoke. Break every yoke of the enemy. I pray for open doors as never before in the history of your people. I pray for pathos, Lord. I pray for a location from where your kids will find a release and a relief they have never known before. Lord, we pray for our country and our world right now. As new doors are about to open, milestones, that you would empower us with your love, God, and your mercy to reach a lost and dying world with your grace, with your truth. Remove every obstacle, O oh God, that would stand in the way of the prosperity of your children, Lord. We pray that you would change the names of your babies. We pray that you would anoint them with the Holy Spirit and power. Come, Holy Spirit. Visit your children, Lord. Visit your children. Have thine own way, Lord. Let a new anointing rest upon your dear ones, Lord, that would take the breath away. Give them wisdom to speak such words of power and kindness that you will take the breath of others away.
We pray a release, Lord, of new things never seen before. In your son and your daughter, in our church, pave the way, God. Open our ears, O oh God, to hear new things. Open our eyes to see new things, Jesus. Dennis, would you get me one of those chairs out there? Bring it in. You know, beloved, I'm just overcome right now. This is not normal for me, but I just want us to sit in his presence if we could. Thank you, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Milestones, God, firsts, firsts. It was Paul's first miracle. Do the first thing in us. It was his first relationship to an influential Roman Lord. Bring a first to us. Well, that feels like Dr. Gene Scott here now. Lord, I pray for every promise that has been spoken over your children. That the promise would move to performance now. So many promises, oh God. But let them become performances now. All the waiting, all the years, all the enduring, I pray, Lord, that you bring a harvest to each life. Can we just intercede around the room right now? Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. We pray for deliverances by the power of the Holy Spirit right now to come. Deliverances. Deliverances, release and relief, Father God. We pray, O oh God, a protection from dark forces over our precious children and our families and our extended loved ones in this church, Lord, that you would see, place your light and your angelic protection over our congregation and all of our, in our country, in our world, God, that your angels, the two-thirds that have never fallen, that they would rise up and fulfill their destinies, God, protecting your children. We pray a protection of fire upon this congregation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray right now that where the hedge has dropped in the past, that you would put up a hedge of thorns against the enemy of our souls right now. Bring up a hedge of thorns against the enemy's work, God, that would supernaturally protect and guide your children in this house. And all those listening and watching, God, I pray they would feel the beautiful warmth of your Holy Spirit as your, as your hedge goes up, as a hedge of protection goes up over their minds, their bodies, their souls, God. We pray for your divine guidance, your light to guide our paths. Lord, give us enough light to see the next right step, we pray. Give us enough light to see the next right step, God. Paphos, the location where all milestones begin to happen. 
where all firsts begin to happen. Paul's very destiny was unfolding. His name changed. His office changed. He went from a teacher and a prophet to an apostle. His ministry relationship changed. Instead of Barnabas and Saul, it becomes Paul. From now on, he moves forward, and he is featured as never before. What a difference a day makes. And suddenly, all the doors were open and all the chains fell off. We pray, Lord, for a season of suddenlies to rest upon your precious lambs. Where it's been laboring and waiting and laboring and waiting and enduring, that that endurance and faithfulness would give way to suddenlies now. And suddenly there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Lord, bring sudden firsts and milestones to your precious children. Let the waiting give way to harvest. And I believe the Lord is going to bring a word of promotion as well. Isaiah 50 verse 4 says, You've given me the ear of the learned that I might hear in order to speak a word in season to them that are weary, that's the word for this house. That's what we represent. But the Lord added this. I believe it's going to be added to your life. 1 Kings 10. It says, When the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold, precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions, and nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, and attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made, it says, her breath was taken away. Do you know what it takes to take a queen's breath away? The queen that has everything and the best of everything all the time. Yet the scripture says that the queen of Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. She went 1,200 miles to Jerusalem and she brought 120 talents of gold. And it says, when she heard the wisdom of Solomon, it took her breath away. Beloved, God is putting a new anointing on you. You're not just going to speak a word in season to him that is weary, but the things you say are going to take the breath away of the people who are listening to you. When you're on the phone with them, when you're giving wisdom, when you're just dropping gleanings, when you're encouraging, you're going to hear just almost like a respiratory (gasps) reaction because the Lord is sharpening your prophetic sensibility and he is beginning to move in a way that's going to take a queen's breath away. By the way, you're going to influence people. Elymas was illegitimately influencing Sergius Paulus. Well, guess what? Elymas was out. And Paul was in. In the book of Esther, it says Queen Vashti was put out as the wife of the king of Persia so that Esther could be put in. Did you know God's putting some people out so he can put you in? Hallelujah. Elymas was a a deceiver influencing one of the most powerful Roman men. And yet God, the Holy Spirit says, there have been demonic powers trying to influence people of influence, but I'm going to put them out and I'm going to put you in. Hallelujah. The Lord is changing the scene. Two weeks ago, we talked about permitted but not blessed. You're about to see the chess board dropped and almost all the pieces scatter and it's going to be put back on the table and there's going to be two or three pieces glued on. But there are people who thought that because 
they were where they were, it's because God put them there. No, he didn't. It was permitted, but not blessed. Sometimes God permits things, but he's never blessing them. And so we're going to see very quickly a shifting of people dropping like flies. People that were permitted but not blessed are going to be removed. And he's removing people so that he can put his own people in the posture of influence and power. Isn't he good? Isn't he wonderful? He's changing your name. He's changing your office. He's fulfilling your destiny. Miracles you've never seen through your life, you've waited for all your life, you're going to see first. And notice Sergius Paulus, his ser- this Paulus and Paul. Paul, his name is changed at Paphos. And he will, at the moment of his greatest victory, this is the first time apostolic power flows out of his hands as he brings blindness on Elymas. That must have been a heady moment. There are miracles that are going to start happening for the first time that you've been hearing about all your life. A time of firsts. Name changing. Teams changing also. Barnabas and Saul had been a team together. But did you know during this trip to Paphos, they had a young assistant named John Mark, and John Mark was a young minister with them. But John Mark abandoned this missionary journey. He left them. As soon as they left Paphos, he left. He abandoned them. And this was Barnabas' cousin. And when they wanted to do the second missionary journey, Barnabas said, well, let's bring John Mark back. And Paul said, no, no, I don't trust the boy. Nope. And it says the dissension became so severe that Paul and Barnabas had to break up. Did you know that God is removing and subtracting scaffolding from the building. Did you know scaffolding is only on the building until the building is finished? And then it falls off. Do you remember the rockets that would take off and in stages, the, the larger portions after the fuel is burned off, what happens? They fall off. They drop off. Well, Barnabas and Saul, after Paphos, were going to separate. They were going to part ways. Did you know there are some people that have been in your life for such an extended period of time and it's been normal to have them around, but it's all right if God wants to come and subtract people, places, and things from our lives. Can you say amen to that? Barnabas had to be removed from Paul. From now on, we don't hear about Barnabas anymore. We only hear about Paul. Paul, his name is changed. His ministry position is changed. He's not a teacher or prophet. He's an apostle. His ministry positioning changes. It's not Barnabas and Saul. It's Paul. From now on, we see his ministry to the Gentiles catapulting him into his absolute destiny. From now on, the rest of the book of Acts is all about Paul. First part was about Peter. This part is about Paul. Oh, beloved. He's just about to fulfill so many promises. It's worth the wait. The wait is worth the wait. I always say the wait, W-A-I-T, is worth the wait, W-E-G-H, the the weight of the glory. The word for glory, gvod, means wait. And the wait is worth the wait. There is a wait coming, paphos. We ought to just get a shirt that says paphos. No one knows what we're talking about. They don't anyway. Paphos, hey! We'll put it in Greek, too. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, our Paphos is our moment where everything changes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, I've waited 63 years serving in your vineyards, God, for what we're about to see, and I give you praise because you're faithful, merciful and gracious, so slow to anger, in pity plenteous. The Lord is so good. He'll not always chide us, nor let his anger or wrath abide upon us. No, the Lord is too good. He is not rewarding me according to my iniquity or treating me after my sin. 
so I will enter into his throne room with boldness. The Lord is so good. Gretchen, could you just go lay hands on the saints right now? Dennis, could you just go and lay hands on the saints right now, just as the Spirit leads you? We pray now, Lord God, and for those viewing and listening right now, that the warm glory, like warm honey, warm oil, would begin to descend upon your lambs. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Fill in all the blank places with your oil, Lord. Let your glory descend upon your children right now. We pray a double portion of your presence, a double portion of your peace. We pray that the confusion in the mind would just disappear in Jesus' name that a deep peace would resonate in the heart of your children right now. Merciful and gracious. We pray for Paphos, Lord, the location, the very location where our milestones begin to emerge. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Comfort your people. Comfort your lambs, Lord. Isaiah 64, verse 4 says, Who has ever heard such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day? Or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Shall a nation be born in a day? Yes. Shall a new season emerge at once? Yes. Shall people of influence become followers of Jesus Christ? Yes. Shall all the promises given be fulfilled? Yes. Suddenly. Thank you, God. Beloved, you're right on time. You're just the right age. You're just steeped in the right kind of wisdom. You're right on time. You haven't missed a thing. And I rebuke every assault of the enemy that you've missed something. God is sovereign. He's bigger than you. You're right on time. We pray, Lord, that you would untie the knots, uh, any knots relationally uh, for those listening, and that you would untie every negative relational knot, Lord, bring peace to relationships and families. Untie knots of confusion, knots of contention. Untie them and bring peace, Lord God. Peace amidst your your precious people here, Lord, the family members, extended family members, we pray you take your iron, Lord, and iron out the wrinkles of contention in the name of Jesus. Take the rope so knotted, so knotted, and pull tiny little knots and untie all the knots out of the rope, the relational ropes, Lord. Our families are every brick that's above us, beside us, beneath us, that you would iron out all of the contentiousness, Lord, and bring rest and relief, we pray in Jesus' name. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. God is not the author of confusion, but peace in all the churches. We pray for peace. And insofar as it is possible with us that we would have peace with all men, We can't shake hands with a clenched fist, but God, we're going to smile even if the fist is clenched. We're going to be gracious. We're going to be kind insofar as it is in our power. 
Thank you, Father. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, we pray for a deep, deep deep-seated peace to garner our relationships, to guard our hearts, to guard our friendships, to guard our church life, God. Let the healthy grass force out all weeds. The best cure to weeds is a healthy lawn. We pray that you would nourish our relational lives, Lord, in this under this roof right now in Jesus' name. Remove any obstacles, Lord, that are standing in the way of your children today. Dissolve any obstacles, Lord, any mountains. Who art thou, O mountain? You shall be made a plain. Zerubbabel stood and saw just the mountains of rubble that used to be the temple. And God said, Zerubbabel, I know, I know that you're looking at a mountain of rubble. I know that you think it's impossible to rebuild the temple. I know, but do not look at that mountain. I will level it and it's going to become a plain. You will build what you're called to build. And you will not be overwhelmed looking at the mountains of ruin around you. Father, give us vision. Open our eyes today in the name of Jesus to see what you see and to see the things as finished that you have called us to do, God, that we will not be overwhelmed at mounds of stones, but you will show us a vision that all those stones will be the temple you've called us to build in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that the hands that began the building of the temple shall finish it. We thank you, Lord God, that everyone under the sound of my voice, called and anointed by your Holy Spirit, will not die before they see the fulfillment of all you promised. Like Simeon, Simeon held the baby Jesus and said, Now let thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which you prepared for all nations. Lord, thank you. We break a spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus Christ. That python density, heaviness, harmfulness. We rebuke that and we pray, pray, Lord, that you would replace fulfillment and harvest in our lives. That's the only context in which we can go home, is when we've finished our task and we are not yet finished. So you can't leave yet. We pray, Lord, that you would remove every spirit of heaviness in Jesus' name. Every yoke of bondage in Jesus' name. Every level of despair, uh, hats of despair, uh, cloaks of despair, that you would strip those away, Lord, and bring hope, life, light, refreshment, and laughter again, God. Bring laughter, belly laughter to your people. Change the nature of our tears from tears of despair with that physiological component of negativity and bring our tears to tears of belly laugh tears, God. Tears of joy, tears of delight. Psalm 126, when the Lord turned our captivity, we were as them that dreamed. We had to pinch ourselves, the text said, to see if we're even alive, if we're even awake. I pray, Lord, for blessing to descend that will make your people have to pinch themselves. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Well, this is a little bit out of, out of the ordinary. <laughs> But I'm going with it. Amen. See, when I was a boy, I used to I used to have a message planned and I knew right where I was going until I got up. And then it would just evaporate and I'd just sit quietly with my guitar for about 15 minutes. That's a long silence. 15 minutes. Everybody's sort of looking at their shoes. <laughs> But I told him he can interrupt me any time, and he just did. Thank you, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. Fill us to overflowing, God. Lord, we pray for the innermost belly of your people, that out of their innermost belly will flow rivers of living water rivers of living water. We summon the rivers, God, of your Holy Spirit 
to surge through us and around us. Brian, you're here? Come on up and pray for a minute. I want my dear brother, my compatriot from Melody Land years, just to speak a word of life over us right now. Thank you, Brother Paul. Lord, we just thank you for your presence here this morning. Lord, wow, you are so faithful. Great is your faithfulness unto us, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, we just sense your presence here so strongly, Lord. We thank you for this prophetic word that's come forth from your man of God this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that is on our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord. You're, he said, you know, sometimes, God, you're just too good. You're too good, Lord. We're, we just feel like I've, I've just had a picture in my mind, Lord, like a sponge that just can't take anymore. Just I'm soaked. Lord, and he just keeps coming. I went, come on. Oh, Lord, you're too good. Lord, and we know that your goodness leads us to repentance, Lord, and we know that your love constrains us. And, Lord, we, you've just been so faithful today with this prophetic word, Lord, the, the edification, the exhortation, the comfort, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, again, for your spirit, Lord, as as Pastor spoke about in uh it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Every, anything in your kingdom is accomplished, Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, the, the, they build it in vain. And so, Lord, we could do nothing without you, Lord. We come before you, Lord, in humble dependence. Lord, we're desperate, Lord. We're desperate for, your, for more of you, Lord. Even more. As we're soaked, we need more, Lord, to fulfill what you've called us to do. And so, Lord, we just come before you, Lord, asking, Lord, for your continued blessings, Lord, in, in the rest of this service. We just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Whew. Bless the name of the Lord. Paphos. What a place. You think when Paul got up that morning, he knew his entire destiny was going to be fulfilled? He didn't. Thank you, Jesus. Gretchen, uh, Dennis, can I have you come up again? I just want to pray over each of you, particularly. And if you could just put your hands on the heads of the people, I want to pray. Those of you watching, um, I gave this word last week, and I, it's a prophetic word. I'd like to give it again right now, if, if I could. It's Psalm 139, 5 and 6. It says, I've gone behind you to clear up the past. I've gone before you to prepare the future, and for the present, my hand is upon you. We don't need to live in the past, nor the future. His hand is on us right here, right now. And Father, I pray right now that you would place a crown upon the head of your daughters and your sons right now, that they would feel your hand present upon their head right now, and that you would just place a crown of peace and of fulfillment upon the head of each one that is touched right now. And I extend my hand to those watching that you would feel the most tender hand upon your head and it would be the Lord crowning you with rest, with fruit, with a sense of contentment and a sense of honor that the Lord is honoring you and thanking you for your faithfulness. 
Sometimes we don't imagine it's possible that Jesus would thank us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been looking at everything that's undone, but I'm looking at what has been well done, and the rest is put under the blood. The Lord crowns you with a thank you crown. He bedecks you with an ornament, a necklace, a bracelet, a ring, a symbol of his gratitude for just surviving what you have with the sweetheart that you've had. Receive ornaments right now. A crown, a necklace, a ring, a bracelet, a brooch, a medal. I just feel like the Lord is giving joy medals out and thank you crowns and just bedecking you and saying thank you so much. Oh, beloved, you will never know this side of eternity, the lives you've influenced. It's not for us to see in time, but we will see in eternity. I always say there's one word in heaven. Oh, and he's a God of multiplication. If you've ever given a cup of water to a prophet because they're a prophet, you receive their entire reward. Now, how's that for God's math? If you ever gave Billy Graham's ministry a cup of water, you receive his entire reward. Now, that is a setup. I sign myself in on that. Receive a crown of praise. Receive an ornament of, of his thanks that you can wear proudly. Thank you, Father. Well done. Thank you. Hear the Son of God. Thank you for your faithfulness when no one else is watching. Thank you for doing the right thing when no one else sees. Thank you for being kind, even in your thoughts, when you're under attack. Thank you for surviving well. Bless you. Hmm. Gretchen, honey, could you come up and pray? Just anything on your heart for the saints, the church, any anything. Just take your liberty. Thank you, Lord, for this family. Thank you for our fellowship. That we are here for one another. That we are here united in our love for you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy. For all of those here and for everyone that we deal with on a daily basis, for our family members, our extended family. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us and for all that you do through us. And thank you, Lord, for this man of God that we have, our shepherd, we pray, Lord, for his protection, even though you have to eat through all the rest of us to get to him. We just thank you, Lord, that we have such a great teacher to tell us all the things and to interpret all the things from you. We thank you, Lord, that we have such a strong head to our church and in our lives and that we have each other, that he has trained us up to support each other in everything. Three o'clock in the morning, there are people that are, we answer our phones because we know there is a need. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen us. Strengthen the bonds between us and between our families and our friends. Help us, Lord, to show this world the light Help us to be salt and light to this world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, I'm blessed. I am so honored to be able to serve here. I am so blessed to sit in this chair. I feel like an old prophet today, leaning on my pulpit. Now, most of you know, but this, this was Catherine Kuhlman's pulpit. This was for 70 years. Everybody who's anybody has preached from this thing. 
And so to me, it's a piece of history. God knows I love historical things, and he gives me little treats, little historical treats that keep me going for six months. And This used to belong to Melody Land Christian Center, and this is the pulpit from which Dr. John Warwick Montgomery taught his sensible Christianity course. Dr. Walter Martin taught him the cults and the occult from this. Rodman Williams, Melody Land School of Theology. Uh, this was the pulpit. Um, this is the pulpit Coleman preached from. Uh, everybody, pretty much anybody, any ministry that you've heard of in the last 30 to 40 years started or had some involvement with this. And uh, they were going to throw it away and put it in the wood chipper. And all the secretaries at Melody, I know, I know ignorance on stilts, right? You can have your cheeks done, your lips done, but you can't fix stupid. It's been said. And the ladies rescued it, and they put it in the car, and they brought it to, to Agora, and they said, Pastor, we know you love history, so we want to give it to you. So people look in, and they think, what is that god-awful-looking, strange, wobbly, chipped-up thing? Well, it's a little piece of history that I love to just, I'm draping myself on today young people in ministry that have heard about this. They want to come and sit and had a man of God used to come and just lay on the floor next to this and worship and prepare his sermon notes. And we don't worship things, but we do honor relics, even relics like myself. We honor people, places, and things that have borne the anointing of God and the symbolism of that anointing. So I just want to bless you and refresh your heart today. I pray that you would sleep. Father, we pray for a spirit of sleep to come upon your children, that they would rest at night peacefully and peaceably, and that anything that would disturb the rest of your people would be disturbed itself, and that you would bring peace, God, and deep rest in the seasons of the night where we would call unto you and feel your warmth and your presence and your protection. We pray a spirit of deep and restful sleep upon these listening to the sound of my voice now, Lord. And we pray again, you know, just on your, wherever the pain is in your body, just put your hand there. Father, we, we even ask today that you would extend a healing flow into the very joints and the marrow of the bones. Lord, we dare to believe that from the top of the head to the soles of the feet that there would be a strange warmth that would heal and restore even the health of your people, the flesh of your people, God. Lord, we know grace is getting something we don't deserve and mercy is not getting what we do deserve. We pray mercy, a mercy flow of healing even in the bodies, God, that we've abused, we ask for your mercy. We pray for a, a special dispensation of mercy. Head to toe. A rejuvenation of a double dose of the Holy Ghost from coast to coast, God, in our soul. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you put your hands together and thank the Lord? Well... Amen. A little unexpected. I meant to preach that a little different, but that's, that's fine. I told him if he wants to interrupt, he can, and he did, and that's his problem. Amen. <laughs> oh, my, my. Well, I think I'm sufficiently saffonsified today. I do think so. I might yield this stool a little bit more in the, in the future. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And one more time, I just before we say goodbye, I want to extend our hands to our precious Nancy here. Let's pray for Nancy. She's going to go have a special procedure done in, 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 in a little bit. Lord, we, we again extend our, our, our hands of love to our precious sister Nancy, Lord, as she prepares to go in and to be blessed, Lord, and to be restored and rejuvenated and renewed, that you would... You would guide the way. Thank you, Lord. You're clearing the future path and you're bringing absolute peace. You're leveling the mountains and raising the valleys and giving her a straight land to walk on, even ground. 
We ask you to refresh her and encourage her in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory. Well, I could, I could shout, but I'm not going to. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift his countenance unto you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We hope today's message has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please visit our website at drcraigjohnson.org. There you can find additional messages of encouragement. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider us in your ministry giving, as we depend solely on the financial assistance of our listeners like yourself. Also, please feel free to send any personal prayer requests. You can find us online at drcraigjohnson.org. God bless you.